Check that. There it is better. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Through the Lens. My name is Steven Siegel, and it's great to see all of you jumping on there. Thank you so much for joining. So today we're going to be chatting a little. We're going to be chatting to Elvin Wong from Zune. He's an overseas marketing manager. We're going to also learn how to say Zune correctly because I know I'm saying it wrong. And then we're going to chat to award-winning cinematographer Ra Sharma, all the way from Australia. So the show is really going international. So I do apologize for the time change, but I really want to keep this as live as possible, no pre-recordings. So we're going to be doing that throughout the the various different episodes and obviously during the season till we find a happy medium and what time really works for us. So in saying that, please feel free to ask any questions. Um, yeah, get involved, send smiley faces. It's all up to you to help me guide this uh, interview and this session. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm really excited. Uh, Elvin and Ra are great characters. You're going to see we've had some great times together. Um, Zian's been doing some things with Nikon, and obviously I do some stuff with Nikon as well. So we're going to be chatting about that but it's all about engaging, having fun, and you guys learning a little bit more behind the actual brand, behind the person, the creator, and that's what the show's about. It's not all just about settings, f-stops, um, content creation. It is gonna be some of that, as I mentioned. There is gonna be some tech side and some picture reviews or video reviews, whatever it may be, and how you create it. But I wanna get to behind the brand, the person behind the brand, the person behind the creator, who they are, what they're about, what makes them tick, and then obviously we're going to be talking about the now and then we're going to be talking about the future. Where is everything going and how are people getting prepared? So to start off with the show, what I'd like to do is if you're liking what you're seeing and you want to leave a message, please make sure that you go and leave a message um, or send a comment on the show right now. If you want to go and follow through the lens on Instagram, there's the link or there's the um, what's the word for it handle over there. And then, yeah, please share, subscribe, and hit that notification button. The next thing I want to be chatting about and we're going to move on to is obviously we're going to talk industry news. So the hot topic right now in South Africa is everyone's, and I've seen a lot of people posting, great, we can go out and shoot. It's all about um, shooting now. We can open our doors. And I just want you to please be careful with regards to that because right now, as far as I've seen, is that it's not open for portfolio sheets and that kind of thing. And if someone has more information on it, please let me know. I want to see what you um, <laughs> what you what you've heard. But from as far as I know, when it goes into level three here in South Africa, it's for publication use, it's for broadcast, and it's for media. And they can go. The, apparently, obviously, the police and the, whoever it's, that's enforcing the law uh, can ask you what you're shooting, why you're shooting, when's the publication date, and you have to supply all of that. So, just having a permit isn't what is isn't everything right now. So, those of you that are photographers, cinematographers out there. Just make sure that you understand. I know the Gazette, I think, is coming out today. They're going to be making out, making an announcement. So just check that before you start booking your shoots and going out there. I'd hate anyone to get into trouble. But if anyone else has some insights into that and know for, for sure, please let us know and let me know, and I'll announce it on the show to make sure that everything's good. Then we are just want to quickly show um, some comments that have come up. Hey, Marley. Awesome. Craig Anderson. Wash hands. <laughs> Am I rubbing my hands too much? Um, Elvin Wong is also watching. He's on board there. Sha, Ra, how are you doing? Ra, good to see you. He's in the backstage there as well. Um, I see you can see the characters, Elvin and Ra, having some fun. We're going to have some fun on the show as well. Um, so that's the industry news for now. It's just keep your eyes open before you go out and start shooting. Make sure you understand what the rules and the law is. We'd hate to get you caught up and yeah, go to jail for that. Other than that, um, I wanted to move on to our next part of the, the show. And sorry, this is the second time. This is the first time I'm introducing it to you. So it is new. It is where it is right now. Is The, uh, the next one that we move on to is new and review. So new and review is the part of the show where there's a new product on the market, a new brand on the product, something exciting, something different. And it's where I get a chance just to show you. So our next product that I'm going to quickly show you for new and review is from a company called YC Onion. Uh, I never heard of it until recently. Um, phenomenal LED panels. It's 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 a great company. So the, yes, the name is YC Onion. And I'm going to be showing you a LED panel called The Pudding. So it's over here. You'll see I've got a little sample. But let me show you a quick uh, video on it. So just have a squeeze here.
So that is the YC Onion Pudding. It's a new light. I'm busy testing it out now, so I'm quite excited to see it. Different name. The interesting thing with the company is it's all about food base. So you'll see they talk about the chocolate slider, the YC Onion Pudding. Um, so it's quite a cool, fun, funky way of naming your brand and naming your product. So keep an eye open on that, and we'll bring more to you in the future, and we will most probably do an interview with them as well. So next up, we've got, obviously, the up-and-coming star, rising star. So this person is a lady by the name of Nikita Moritz. Now, she entered into the industry. Um, I'm going to show you some of her work now. Phenomenal, phenomenal creator. She's up and coming. She's finished studying at Open Window. And as you know, Open Window has got phenomenal, phenomenal students. They really know what they're doing. And when they come out of Open Window, they, they, it's just a next level kind of thing. So really excited to have her showcasing her work. And who is the rising star moving forward? Let's quickly move on and show you what her stuff looks like. Um, here it is here. We're going to share the screen. And there you can just see the kind of style and work that she's presenting. She's busy now, so a lot of her work hasn't come out right now. Her and her husband are doing a phenomenal YouTube channel. Um, you'll go and have a look. I'll, I'll send the in information at the below of this link. Um, they're busy sh um, shooting a YouTube channel, both on a religious side, a Christian channel, as well as a fashion lifestyle channel with over 500,000 followers on the one and 250,000 on the other. So really happening, this is the girl to be watching moving forward. So there's Nikita Moritz, who is our up and coming. All right, so moving that out there, I want to now move on to our brand spotlight. And this is where we jump into chatting to Elvin Wong. I've been really excited to chat to him because he's a character, but then when you put Ra and Elvin together and the three of us, that's next level stuff. All right, so let's move in. And I just want to, before we move into that, I just want to check if there's any more comments. Um, here we go. Nikita, there she is there, the lady of the hour that I was busy chatting to. Phenomenal person, phenomenal creator. Her and her husband make an amazing duo. So Nikita, thank you so much for joining on. Alan, thank you so, so much. Yeah, we Alan, Alvin, you're a legend. Pricing with regards to the uh, YC Onion, it isn't even in South Africa as yet. So they are looking for distribution, and Alvin will most probably chat to me more a little bit. I'm going to ask him a little bit because he knows more about them as well. And then we've got Alvin going <laughs> great on Nikita. Nikita, howdy, friends. Thank you so much. So, guys, this is a live broadcast. That's the whole thing behind it. I want it to not be pre recorded. Anyone can cut, paste, and make it look perfect. This is not a perfect show. This is just a show to be able to reach out to you and engage with you and see real people chatting to real people. All right, so let's introduce and let's welcome, obviously, on um, Alvin Wong. Alvin, how are you, my friend? Hey, Steven. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. How's everything going in South Africa? Amazing. But South Africa is missing you, but we're in lockdown, so yeah. we're, I'm, I'm really missing you. I love your shirt. I love the branding that you've got. I need to get some of those. Huh? Looking good. I have to wear this. I have to wear this today. We're talking about ji right? Or zi or zai I don't know. <laughs> now, tell me, what is the, how do you how are we going to actually say it? So how, how do you pronounce this? How do you pronounce this? Ziyun. <laughs> no, we, we uh, pronounce it. So that's the, that's you'll see the South African thing is Ziyun. But how do you supposed to say it? What is how is the name? Um, okay, it's pronounced as it's a Chinese word. Uh, it's pronounced as Ziyun. Oh my goodness, Ziyun. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. No, we have people, you know, pro pronouncing it as Ziyun. We have people pronouncing it as Zayun. I have yeah. some other funny pronunciation, but I think it's 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 fine. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter how you pronounce it, as long as you use it, you show it. I think that's that's good enough. That's, that's good enough. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So those of you that are out there, Elvin is the uh, head of our overseas marketing. He's the overseas marketing manager. And sorry, I didn't give you that intro, but with regards to Zion, I want like you know, Zion came onto the market with a bang. I mean, we, uh, you know, there were, there were other products out there and other brands out there like DJI mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And Zoom just came out of nowhere and just, you know, infiltrated and it was phenomenal. Your brand presence is absolutely incredible. So tell me a little bit more about, you know, the background of the brand and how did you just make that break? Okay. Uh, basically, you know, Chirin has been around for six years. Uh, you know, we have been around for six years and you know, all along, uh, we have been always, you know, creating, innovating, uh, coming up with really 
innovative kind of gimbal solution for filmmakers for videographers so um you know we 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 actually started off like really small at the time uh what we did was uh, we actually did like pretty much like a smartphone gimbal uh and like a very basic kind of camera gimbal without any functions uh any okay. as we move along the way you know we actually you know created a lot of new innovative gimbal which actually helps uh, all our actually users to solve a lot of problems so yeah. um if you could remember back clearly we actually had uh, one of the really cool products that i have a really deep impression is the crane 2. so uh crane 2 is uh, something that we actually yeah. yeah we actually start off because um for Crane 2, we are actually the first, um, you know, manufacturer for gimbal that actually has a solution for focus. And uh, okay. we are pretty much the pioneer who actually had a built-in um, full focus function uh, on the gimbal itself to, you know, allow the users to easily have the focus control on the gimbal yeah. itself, which is actually a big, uh, I personally feel that it's actually a big solution for a lot of uh, like videographers, uh, filmmakers out there, because I think uh, in terms of focus pulling is probably one of the important part when you know it comes about your filming. And uh, you know, if you will have to have a camera on the gimbal, it's, it doesn't make sense if you reach out to the focus lens or the focus ring of the, the lens to manually control it, which yeah. it's, 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 it's a little bit off. So what we did was we actually came up with a solution where we okay. actually had a built-in follow focus uh, function on the crane tool, yeah. which allows that. So that is like one of our really, really cool innovation that I personally love it till today. Yeah. And uh, subsequently, we we came up with a lot more products like the Weeble, Weeble S, uh, the Crane Tree oh, app, the Crane Tree S, which it's, uh, it's an amazing innovation because uh you know the reason why we actually had this all this sort of innovation is because uh we we believe we strongly believe in terms of uh communicating and understanding the needs of all our users so that's the reason why we actually work very closely with uh you know a lot of our influencers a lot of, a lot of our you know content creators and uh, they always give us a lot of feedback and we always you know we always really want to hear from the feedback because uh you know there are some problems at certain times but we we will try our best to actually to manage and solve the problem but uh, i think the key word in terms of our you know vision is pretty much innovation because uh, these days um, people who uses our products our gimbals uh you know we want to give them a, a very good experience in terms of using it because um, yeah. as you probably already know there are a lot of gimbal makers manufacturers in the market right now so yeah. um you know what we're trying to do is you know we we want to be you know in close relationship with our users and we want to you know innovate something which they will feel that it's it's really good for them so that is yeah. pretty much uh you know what we've been doing and um the reason why we managed to you know keep in touch really closely with our you know users is because we feel them and we are you know non-stop we are constantly creating things that they want and they have been you know you know waiting to have this sort of products to use so it's all about creating uh, innovative experiences for all the users agreed and you can see it i mean in all that you guys do and all your interactions and uh, engagements that go out there and i think that's why one of the key things is what we've done is i've got raw coming on the show i mean he's a phenomenal content creator himself but <laughs> what i also I, I want to quickly before i get on to that because i mean you've done collaborations i mean i joined you in december uh, when was it october november last year um, for an engagement and i love the way you reach out but before we get on to that because that's going to lead me into obviously the chat with Ra. is what are your two new uh releases that you've got there i see you've got the q2 smooth uh, i think it is and the crane 3 lab s is it mm -hmm. crane 3 s uh crane 3 s is basically our latest product uh it's pretty much for the professionals so um as you can see in the photo um uh, it's actually meant more for cinematic cameras. So uh, these days, uh, you know, 
we you know we have we are seeing a lot more people trying to you know shoot with this sort of cinematic cameras so uh this yeah. is actually a solution for you know users who are using cinematic cameras big bigger setups uh camera setups so it's a it's a it's a solution for them and uh, in terms of the size of the queen trias it's actually a sort of like a bigger version of the previous screen tree lab but uh in terms of the size of the gimbal you, it's not that much of a difference it's not like really bigger compared to the queen tree lab it's just that there are certain yeah. parts of the queen tree s that you know we actually design it in such a way whereby it's able to take like a bigger camera yeah. body uh, as well as payload i love it sorry i'm just busy and, looking um, yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite product is actually the Crane M2. I, I saw you were flipping around the Crane M2 earlier. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about Smooth X. Smooth X is uh, Smooth X is basically the a recent product that we have just launched. In fact, we just only launched it last week. So um, okay. Smooth X is a, a basically it's a very fun gimbal. Uh, yeah. It's really easy to use, uh, and we actually had a we actually created a new application for the smooth x uh, it's called yeah. the zy cami so for all our users uh who have been using our products uh you know that actually our the name of our app is called zy play but for the smooth yeah. x uh, we actually have a totally new app called the zy cami which is spelled as c-a-m-i uh okay. and so there are a lot of really really fun features on the the zy cami app um, I've recently just gotten hold of it as well. I've played around. I've like, spent a couple of days playing around with it, and it's really, really fun. You know, there are a lot of really cool features. Like, um, you know, there is one of the features that I really like is uh, we call it the smart filmmaking feature, where it allows you. We have like a default built-in default uh, different teams in this feature, yeah. and uh, in each teams, they actually has like a sort of like a built-in. Um, transition as well as some uh, background music so all you yeah. need to do is just to you know when you when you activate this feature when you use this feature all you need to do is just to take a couple of shoots and then yeah. automatic, automatically um, this feature actually helps you to stitch all these footages together and uh, to make it into like a small video you know with transitions uh, with uh, i think a little bit of filter effects and background yeah. music and then after that you know you can just immediately upload it on your you know maybe your social media platforms and immediately you can actually share this like amazing short video of what you are doing maybe you are you're cooking at home you want to show how you cook you know things like that so it's it's a really really fun you know feature to play with especially for those who you know may not have experience uh not only just shooting video but also in terms of editing so um I think one of the difficult or time consuming part of you know shooting video is pretty much of editing the video. So with this feature, yeah. you can easily stitch you know all the footages together and it creates like a really cool short video. And you can, you can share it immediately. You don't have to export it to, to your computer, you don't have to you download like a third party edit video editing app to edit it separately. So it's really fast, easy to use and it's fun. That's the main idea. So the small pack is actually a really really fun uh, gimbal, I personally would say. And yeah. then yeah, that's that's our latest product. So I think you will be able to find it in the market really soon, uh, probably okay. like this week or so. Maybe this these two weeks you'll be able to find it in your you know probably in your local stores. Got it. Okay, no, that's perfect. And that's the main thing I wanted to check is just get your your the main products that are out there. I see. I mean, you've, you're going through various different products and you're growing within obviously the Cine side of things. Mm -hmm. I love the Weeble S. I've got the Weeble S and the Q2 Smooth. Absolutely love them. Um, I think yeah. you know, I can't live without them. It's gone, it's gone from dollies and all that kind of fun stuff to obviously just handheld and moving around. So it's changed the way we do things. Um, talking about that, and let's move on. Uh, I quickly see Nikita mention something and you did answer her. Um, do you do, here's Nikita's question, do you do gimbals for DSLR cameras? And as we know, you do, um, phenomenal ones. Weeble S, Nikita, that's the one that you'll look at, unless Alvin's got another recommendation for vlogging, vlogging, because you'll see here, she obviously wants to see how she can try it out for a YouTube channel. Cool. Um, uh, maybe I want to just share with Nikita, like, you know, 
Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think uh, it really depends on what is your camera setup because uh, for Zhiyun, we actually have a whole product lineup for different products. You know, from like smartphones all the way to compact cameras, to mirrorless cameras, to DSLRs, all the way to cinematic cameras. So we actually have a full range of, um, you know, gimbals for different camera setups. So for your setup, uh, maybe you want to share with us what camera setup are you using? So maybe I will, yeah. you know, I will, I will better than advise, like, you know, what is the suitable gimbal for you to use? Um, yeah. I'll get you guys in touch. That's awesome. So now tell me, a part of obviously what Zion does and Zion is, is obviously the collaborations. And I think that's what really made you guys grow is that those collaborations, that willingness to collaborate with other brands, Tell me more about that and that kind of thing because I know we did something last year with you. We did a Nikon Roadshow yeah. and there was there there was Atomos that joined up. Um, who else was there? There was a couple of brands that that joined us. Um, uh, ET was with us. Aperture was with us. Atomos, uh, yeah. Small Rick. Yeah. Uh, so basically, so, you know, I I I collaborate with a lot of these uh, you know other brand manufacturers. Uh, you know, because we we have been actually doing a lot of like workshops uh, like all around the world. So uh, you know what I've been doing recently with all these guys is that you know we are actually collaborating to create like a solution, a workshop solution for everyone to learn. You know, you know instead of like you know just if I were to just represent like you know Zion to organize or to conduct like a gimbal workshop. Uh, People who comes to attend the workshop, they'll just pretty much learn how to how to operate a gimbal or how to you know make use of the gimbal some of the gimbal features to shoot a good uh, you know a good uh, content. But yeah. uh, you know subsequently you know what the rest I get I've got a lot of response that you know these people they only learn how to you know use a gimbal. So end of yeah. the workshop, when they go back home. They only know how to use a gimbal. That's about it. But that doesn't mean that you know they can they can you know shoot a good production, or shoot a good video. So uh, eventually, I you know started to you know get a lot of this feedback, and I started to communicate with a lot of other you know manufacturers uh, you know in China, and uh, we actually decided why not you know let's collaborate because you know end of the day, uh, we are not trying to be a salesman just to you know hard sell our products, but. You know, we're trying to yeah. give a solution for these people who are, you know, honestly wanting to learn. Unfortunately, they don't yeah. have an opportunity. They don't have much opportunity to learn. So uh, instead of like spending like a lot of time attending a gimbal workshop, attending a light workshop, attending a camera workshop, a microphone workshop, why not we just do it together and we just create like a new solution? So all you need to do is just to attend one workshop. We, we will have a, a, some really cool, you know, content creator or some really cool trainers to come in and, you know, teach you everything from solutions, from operating a camera to gimbal, to playing around with lights, creating effects to audio, you know, creation, things like that. And so far we have already, you know, done it in a couple of regions. Uh, I've worked with you, Stephen, in uh, Africa before, in South Africa. Uh, we've, collaborated with, we've collaborated with Nikon. Uh, and uh, you know, the response there was really amazing. It was my first time actually doing a workshop in South Africa. But you know, to be honest, I've done uh, workshops a lot of places in around the world. But uh, the the ones the workshop that I did in South Africa was the one that left me the most memory because uh, the people you know the people in South Africa who, who attends this workshop, you can feel them that they are honest people who are you know really wanting to learn and i thought it was yeah. really good because i could feel the passion i could feel that that kind of eager that they are honestly wanting to learn and uh, you know we were we were really fortunate to got to get like uh invite like people like rashama to join us yeah where, you know he's an amazing content creator and uh you know he talks a lot but you know <laughs> in a good way <laughs> you know, good way. He's gonna kill. He's gonna kill me after this. Yeah, but anyway, uh, that's why we do it when he comes on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so so you know, uh, one thing I love about Ra is because he he has a, a really huge passion in what he's doing, like his, yeah. his filmmaking, and uh, 
he has a really, really huge passion in doing what it is. So, you know, when we were, you know, doing this workshop in South Africa, uh, he was so passionate because because of the really good response from the, from all the audience. He was so passionate about it that, you know, we were supposed to do a workshop for like, I think four or five hours, but eventually the whole entire workshop stretched for like, I think six or probably like seven hours. Or like and eight I, hours. I was, I was really, really surprised. I was really surprised that every, almost every single people, person, you know, in the group actually stayed on. And they were yeah. not like, oh no, okay, five hours is up. Okay, I'm going to leave after five hours. That's it. And yeah. you know, we actually ex we actually overrun the workshop like I think by probably about two hours. And yeah. these guys, every single one of them actually stayed in, and they continued listening. And even after the additional two hours, when we ended the the workshop, they actually continued to stay and they actually stayed back and approached us to ask us yeah. questions about you know about like you know how to create a good content. What sort of products should I use for what sort of contents? They actually stayed back and you know ask us, and we were we were so surprised by you know that kind of reaction, the kind of yeah. response from these people. So I thought you, you know, know this is actually a very good experience, and we want to share more of this in the other regions in the world as well. Let me show. Let me show them. Let me get. I've got uh, raw shot. We've got some behind the scenes before we intro raw. I'm going to quickly show them this video so they can actually see what it was like. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. This is one of the. This was. Oh, this was the videos that we took. In I think it was in Joanna's book. Yeah. So this was uh we actually did like a solution workshop and we actually engaged like models to come in to That's, you know, do some yeah, um, yeah this was this was the first one of the first workshop that we did in Johannesburg. So look at the amount of people who attend the workshop. It was amazing. It was amazing. So we actually did like a you know uh, a total solution workshop. So what we did was what Ra did was he actually shared like you know how to shoot with the Nikon Z6. Um, yeah. you know, in this scene, he's actually showing how to make use of, uh, you know, the aperture lights to create certain effects, like, you know, showing some of the shadow lines of the dancer, you know, um, things like that. And, uh, you know, when he moves around, he's actually, you know, shooting the, you know, with the Nikon Z6 on the Wido S. So he's showing that how easy to maneuver around. Look at him. Yeah. So it's like maneuvering around, uh, creating like you know different kind of effects using the functions of the Wido S. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty pretty cool. And look at everyone. Everyone was like you know standing up, taking photos, taking videos. <laughs> And everyone was really engaged. They were really engaged in the in the in the workshop. Yeah, it was it was amazing. It was really amazing, phenomenal. There's what what you can see. You can see aperture there. You can see Atomos was there. You were there. I mean, it was just such a great brand collaboration with obviously everyone. And Ra doing his thing. We're gonna jump onto Ra now. So yeah. Let's let's move into raw. So that there is that was phenomenal. Absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Sorry, let's just do this. Cool. So that was obviously the lead up into this that brand collaboration. I want to welcome Ra on now. He's ready to rock and roll. I can see he's in the background. There. He's been answering some questions. I've seen Nikita's got some answers from Ra already on the back back yeah. end of things. Uh, Canon, she's also using a Canon 6D um to use for different so brilliant it's all sorted out um Ra, thank you so much for welcoming my wife onto the show as well <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's get Ra sharma on our award-winning cinematographer there we go what an entry hey? I, I mute your mic first there Ra? you go i think i muted it yeah just try again there. You can unmute. I'm trying to unmute, but I can't. Ra, ra, ra. I'm not connected. 
<laughs> oh boy, I was just I was just going to say that it was actually a great entry, but <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, let's just send him a message behind the scenes. He came um, out then... with the smoke and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he needs to join in again. Why not? Okay. Yeah. We'll, okay, we'll, let we him go. we'll let him join in again. Intro for him. So we're going to quickly chat about Ra. Um, so Ra is an award-winning cinematographer based out of Australia. Um, he travels the world creating phenomenal content. He's worked on various movies, um, short films, that kind of thing. His technique and his passion for it, and I'm just going to pull you out of here while Elvin while I'm busy chat. Um, his passion for what he does is you can see it, everything he does. And those workshops that Elvin, were talk that Elvin was talking about was really a success because of the collaboration, but also because of Ra himself. You'll, you'll see it. It's one thing when someone comes and just delivers a speech and tells what they need to do. And it's when someone comes there and they've got life and they love what they do and they're passionate about what they do and they engage. And I think that's what the key is with regards to Ra and how he interacts with people. And that's why I've got him on the show. And that's what I'm going to be doing with the Creator Corner is to be able to bring people on. And I just want to make sure I bring the right one up. It's a Creator Corner, this one that we're talking about. I want to bring people that are passionate about what they do and we want to find out what makes them tick, etc. So I'm going to quickly bring Ra back on before I bring Elwin back on. So Ra, welcome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> so you. Got... Thank you. Hopefully it works now. <laughs> yeah, that, that that whole smoke vibe is so so good. So, <laughs> um, that was just me, um, me um, getting charged for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Ra Sharma, audience applause. Yeah, comes from Nikita, huh? <laughs> Very kind of her. And then here we go. She's also asking about hosting another workshop like that after lockdown. So definitely, we I'm definitely trying to get Ra out here. We'll we'll definitely he's keen to come. We'll get him out here as soon as lockdowns, you know, over and out. So, right before I bring Elvin back on, because obviously you want to have that connection, I just want to know oh, what, are you, what are you busy up to? Now we have to get the three of us together. What are you busy up to right now? What am I busy up to? Okay, so I've got a couple of um, backlogs, um, some backlogs editing happening. Um, I'm working on approximately, I think, five, six different commercials right now. Um, lockdown's happening, but that doesn't mean you can't get work um there's always a way to find work um yeah. and then on top of that at the moment i'm working with a very good friend of mine a writer rachel bell myers um she's a good writer director and she's writing a short film and this short film is going to be filmed in the next couple of weeks um and uh, it's going to be done on the atmos ninja v everything's going to be recorded on prores raw and the idea is to see i mean in January, I went to US to record a short film and it was good, but it was limiting because of the budget and, and time constraints and also situation with, um, 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 how can I say it, the cold, which we are not used to in Australia. Um, um, yeah. All of those, you know, counter into a lot of things. So we're actually creating a short film right now um, and uh, hopefully it's out in a month, hopefully. <laughs> Well, that's brilliant, man. That's great to hear that you're busy and out and about and doing things, even though you know COVID's doing what it's doing to this industry. Now, tell me, Ra. I mean, you got phenomenal work, and I love what you do, and I love your passion. But where did you start out, like as a content creator? Where Where was the beginnings? Where did you decide that you went from whatever you were doing before? Because I know you're a DJ, DJ Ra Sharma. Uh, <laughs> but yet, just take us back. How did you develop and get into the role that and where you are today? How far do you want me to take it back? <laughs> um, you've got literally two minutes to do that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I always had the no, passion joking, of doing something for myself. Um, that's that's rule number one. I always had the passion of doing something for myself. Um, seeing a lot of my family members working for companies and getting redundant to, you know, being terminated due to unable to work and a lot of things. I always had the grudge in me that, hey, I'm going to be a freelancer. I'm going to have my own business. I'm going to do something, but I'm my own boss. I don't want to limit people and I don't want to limit myself on what I'm worth. You know, for creatives out there, you know, we, we always um, get a figure assigned to our head and what we are worth, especially when we're in a full-time yeah. position. So I didn't like that approach. And um, I came to a situation, you know, I've always run my business regardless if it's failed or succeeded. Um, a lot of has failed and I'm very glad that I've got more failures in life than success because I can learn from it. The earlier I can fail, uh -huh. you know, it says according to a lot of psychological research and um, personality types that the 
the best time to learn is between your age of 20s. And a lot of my failures have been during the age of 20s as well. And I'm quite fortunate about it as well, which actually led me into being a, a filmmaker, independent you know, cinematographer as well. So the way I can say it, yes, I did go through DJ, um, you know, Ra, and and my phone number was oh four three Pele DJ Ra, and that was pretty cool. Um, back in the day, I've yeah. done some live sound, and then um, I always had a passion for websites and creative and marketing. So I went through a yeah. situation where I started a business and uh, I started doing corporate um, corporate videos and also doing a lot of websites for pharmaceutical companies, designing things oh, wow. in Magento, PHP, CSS, um, um, online Another. service, things like that. That's, that's, that's what I used to work with. Um, so in the daytime, I was actually working with my clients to score the job and, and working on the jobs. And in the nighttime, I used to work on servers and talk to my programmers in India and the Philippines and try to make work happen. But you know, there's a problem yeah. there. When do I sleep? So um, it become quite, it became quite, quite um, strange, you know, strange uh, for a, a normal human behavior to not sleep. Um, and that actually turned into a disaster where I couldn't cope in very well. So I did get a few people on board to help me out. And then I decided, hey, this is good. But every single time I make a website, another marketing company gets approached and they rebrand the entire thing. I don't like that. I like to be able to see my work or something that I've done, something I'm passionate about, but something that people can appreciate and be there. I tried yeah. painting. I, I failed miserably. I tried drawing. I could draw stick figures. That's the best I could do. I can't do storyboard. It's as simple as that. But that's okay. That's okay. I mean, Stephen, for you, that's a different thing. You need to learn how to draw because you're using, you know, those pens and, and you know, welcome, uh, yeah. welcomes. I think it's the called. I, I don't know. How to, yeah, 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 the tablets and stuff. So um, I believe in no failure, no growth, and and that's hundred percent true. And Nikita said that, um, yeah. and I, I believe a lot of audience would agree to this as well. And my advice yeah. to anyone is fail a lot, but the main thing is it's not about failing. When you get all the way down. It's just a little bit of matter of push to bring yourself back up because yeah. falling down is easy. You know, anyone can fall down by, by making um, uh, mistakes on purpose, but for you to get back up, that's yeah. different. So what I decided is, hey, um, let's get a couple of boys in, you know, let's, yeah. let's um, you know, get a couple of bottles and, and write a script. Why? Um, yeah. At that time, I had a um, couple of DSLR cameras, some mirrorless cameras, probably one of the first one came in the market. And I had a yeah. Atmos Ninja recorder, the old school one. And I did talk to my mates. I said, look, I don't want to take full credit because that looks bad. Um, um, it's just a personal approach I took. I yeah. didn't um, figure out where I was going to go with it, but we just wanted to create a short film. So we created a short yeah. film called The Briefcase. It was experimental. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so the briefcase was created in, I'd say, eight hours of filming, um, four hours each night. And um, it was very tough because no one was experienced, neither was I, not um, yeah. not the actors. I think most of the actors were from retail stores. We just pulled them up randomly saying, yeah. okay, do you want to work with us? Do you want to work with us? Some people would look at us saying, <laughs> Love it. this does not look Love good. It. A guy in a white panel van going and getting people to work with them, I mean, that is not cool at all right so um with a little bit of passion with a little bit of talking skills i was able to convince a couple of girls and guys to come on board and we did we created this short film called the briefcase it was experimental purely experimental um there was some motion graphics involved in there as well and first time we ever done that um yeah. and uh, i had some good friends such as sumit joseph he actually came on board as well um uh, michael Ameroso, he was also working with me back in the day so these guys helped me create a short film and by creating a short film, we were able to see whatever gear we had while doing wedding videos. Could we just yeah. take that gear and the small LED lights? I think it was the Aperture Emeron LED lights, which I actually had um, battery powered yeah. by double A's. And I still have like 10 of them sitting in the garage somewhere, which I need to give away. Um, <laughs> and we created a, a short film and, you know, it was quite amazing because we were randomly approached by a short film film uh, film festival called made in the west um we submitted it i got in surprisingly um and uh, we actually won best cinematographer award from there my life changed the life didn't change because of the film the life changed because of what we'd done after the film we actually communicated to every filmmakers that were there 
having drinks with them, um, you know, talking about what they're doing, you know, respecting other people's project. Everyone has different skill set. You can't just bombard people, you know, and be trolls for people who you want to put down. You have to work with people who are good and getting better, both of that, because one day in life, they're going to be as good as you and you're going to need that. So I started networking, right? And I started networking with a girl called Rachel Bell Myers. And um, um, she's half Indian and um, 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 I, a mix, but she's also from Fiji, which where I'm from. So that kind of gave yeah. us this connection, right? And we started working on short films. We've done curated illusions. We've done a couple of short films after that. And then all of them won awards. Now, working with Rachel, all of this project became paid as well, where she would generate revenue and pay me and pay the crew. And she's very professional doing this. So I give applause to her as well for, for her to be able to recognize my skill set on the first short film that I ever done in life and actually approach me and said, Ra, let's do this. And now, to be honest, the film that I told you about with Nikon and Atomos we're doing, um, yeah. this is written by her as well. And it's going to be directed by a female director. And I'm quite excited about this. So oh. having a female director and a writer producer on board is quite beneficial because you learn how different people work. And I like working with different cultures, different methods, different people, different styles of shoot. And a lot of people will recognize my stuff very, very dark, you know, coming from um, the cinematic point of view where I love lighting everything from scratch. Even if it's outdoor, yeah. chuck in the ND filter, get the background as dark as possible, introduce light and let's do it. You know, use the sun as a backlight. There's so many ways of lighting. But the question is, how do you move one step forward? You try yeah. to create something on social media, right? The the yeah. only way we can get our work out there is two ways without, well, there's two ways of getting work out there. One is social media. The second is yeah. film festivals. With film festivals, you have relevant viewers. You have people who actually understand films, people who actually make films, and people who come actually watch films. So it's relevant. You will get mixed reviews but you're not going to get reviews such you get online where you have a lot of trolls. Trolls are okay. Because a lot of times when trolls are coming on board, when people are commenting, they don't even have a profile. They don't even do the work. They don't even have videos to show. So I learned this the hard way because I never went to film school. I haven't been to university. I haven't been to, you know, I didn't have that opportunity or hundred thousand dollars or $50,000. So a genius um, named Glenn um, from Digital Logic, one day he sat me down, he said, Ra, you got two options, mate. I'm like, okay, what's that? And I was sitting on a red couch. Um, it was quite interesting, casting couch. Um, and he said, Ra, spend $100,000, go to a film, fest, um, film school, learn everything, and then start working as an internship, start making money, and you've still lost that money anyway. I mean, you've gained education, yes. Or you could go all the way through the scratch, learn it yourself, and lose the hundred thousand dollars in mistakes. So I chose yeah. that. Why? Because I am very competitive, and I'm one of those guys who sees something and say, "I think I can do that, but I can do it better." A lot of times I can't, but when you fail, yeah. you actually learn another way. So I decided to take the route of not going to film school, learning everything myself, making a hell of a lot of mistakes. But I thank everyone who actually supported me with these mistakes and, and the amount of mistakes I made, especially my wife, Jane. You know, she's been around here, you know, with me for years and years, more than 12 years, more than 13 years, you know, with me and seeing my ups and downs. And like they say, you know, there is no backbone without having a strong wife. So there we go. I love it. I love it. I actually got my, you know, Ra, I, it's, I really love chatting to you because that's exactly what I want the viewers to hear. I want them to hear that there are those ups, there are those downs, and how you persevered. I mean, it's not easy in the industry with so many people out there, so many people trying so hard. And I mean, I, I, it says mom, it's actually my sister that's busy watching. She said, um, she is, you're really inspiring. And does he have a mentor, someone he draws inspiration from? So do you draw inspiration from anyone? Or do you just um, draw it from life for many? It's just if, it's, life experience. Look, I'll be honest. I draw inspiration. The most two important one, well, the three important one is to my parents, mom and dad, and my wife. I see what they do in life because I, I like listening to people. I like listening to stories. I like listening to the way people react in life. I'm not going to talk about what they do good and bad in life, but what I'm trying to say is my mom and my dad had taught me two different skill sets, you know, that they are really good at, but that might not work for them, but works for me. My wife has taught me something that she's good at. That's the key elements because why I, I call them my key elements in regards to my success is you learn at home. Everything starts at home. You're surrounded with these people 24 seven. 
And then after that comes all of the secondary inspirations where there's filmmakers out there. You know, um, to be honest, um, when I first started, I think one of the first channels I came across was Philip Bloom. Um, I started watching his stuff and he was wow, phenomenal. Yeah. You know, and then when I met um, Philip also in um, in um, Germany, in, in Paurokina, it was a, a, a good charm to, you know, have a conversation with him. So there's many people out there whose work I follow, whose work I like, whose style I like. But at the end of the day, I just love watching movies. I love watching series. And, you know, in regards to motivation, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I listen to so many um, things which... Um, are controversial, you know, I listen to things which set people apart. I even listen to things where there's a lot of trolls, you know, because you know what, if there's a lot of trolls and there's a lot of rubbish comments, there has to be something good about the video. That's how I see it. The more you're putting down, the more people talking about you, the more you're growing. It's simple as that. It's it's very simple as that. I love, yeah, no, it's, it's so true. Tell me with, with regards to it, I mean, your, your perspective on how you do things and what you do things, is, is so interesting because I never looked at it. I looked at those external influences and that's what creates obviously your internal. What is your favorite series? That's what I wanted to ask you. Um, my favorite <laughs> series is actually on Netflix. It's called the uh, Money Heist. It's called Money Heist. I love that thing. Yeah. I'm falling in love with it. I love the music. I love the composition. Look, I'm saying this in a whole. I'm not saying it's either the best cinematography, or it's either the best direction, or it's the best, you know, um, choices of actors. But what I'm saying is, I enjoyed that overall in theory. Like, you know, but watching it, I just watched there was more series available, or more episodes, or you know, more seasons. And I hope it does come. But you know, that's that's what it is. Everyone's got their choice. But at this stage, Money Heist is my favorite. I'm going to go and watch it. So tell me, moving forward, and Ra, this is a big thing. Moving forward, what? What are you going to be doing or focusing on? Or are you just going to, like, when I ask that question, are you going to be focusing on what you're currently doing now and building on that? Are you going to be looking at new avenues of, you know, pushing your experience and what you have to offer in services? Because then I'm going to ask, uh, bring Elvin on and just to chat about the collaboration with you guys. Definitely, so definitely. Right now, yeah. Look, when I first started, I had a dream. Um, I had a dream to create awesome, awesome content. And by content, I mean films. Um, being situated in Sydney, Australia, there's a, there's a lot of filmmaking happening here, but they're independent, meaning people similar to me or they're bigger, bigger companies like Marvels and, you know, things coming up and, and doing those things. And most of the time people have their preferred cinematographer or DP or, or director yeah. or, you know, even people on set. So I've been on a few feature films and I was very fortunate to be able to have those experience on, you know, being on sets, which are, you know, 20 day long, 30 day long. And it's, it's yeah. quite amazing. You know, you, you create a family, you create a, a new relationship with people when you start working together in that detail. You know, you got hard times, you got good times. It's like being in marriage, you know, you get up and downs. It's just like that, yeah. being on a feature film. Um, yeah. And then I realize at the end of the day, I need to have my creativity going up, but at the same time, I need my bank balance going up. Um, and uh, it happens in feature films, especially when you're situated in a very good production house or if you are if you're connected to the right people. But calculating my place, where I live, my age, my skill sets, what I'm trying to do and what I'm not good at, my weaknesses, always look at your weakness because you've got to use your weakness as your advantage on what you shouldn't be doing. Because if you can't do something, don't do it. You can yeah. learn how to do it. It's going to take you time to learn. Don't expect to learn something in a week and go start charging people to do the job. You hire people who are talented in each skill set to make your team work. You can't do anything alone. It's impossible. Try shaking your hand yourself. I mean, that is very uncomfortable. It doesn't work. You need two people to shake hands. That's how it works, right? So what my point is, I'm actually focusing more on commercials and more fo focusing more on TVCs and, and trying to be more of a commercial filmmaker. It's a learning curve for me. Um, at the moment, everything's 50-50. I do films and I also do commercials, but I will be leveling that up where the films are going to be more passionate. It's going to be more um, oriented on based on the people I know. I'm not buying a ticket to Mumbai or, or, or LA, you know, I'm actually just working on as projects come. And what I've realized is just because I love communicating, I like sharing my experiences, being a, a TVC producer or being a TVC creative or, you know, someone who does a lot of commercials. I love that because I like getting a product and finding a way 
for you to be convinced to buy this. I like doing that. I like generating concepts and ideas. And I suppose that's why I was running a marketing company before doing Google Ad, was doing website designs, figuring out whether placements is, you know, doing split A and B tests. Yes, my YouTube channel is not very good, not very big. People will say, you know, you got to do what you preach. Yes, but I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I do this in my spare time. I got a lot of tasks to do beside it. So my full focus is um, running my production house, running my company, growing it. And hopefully one day, you know, doing doing a um, commercial for South African, you know, um, 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 Mr. South Africa, whoever's going to be next. I mean, <laughs> I love you, man. Oh, that's brilliant. I just wanted to quickly hear, Nikita's got another question. Um, uh, apart from films, do you have any interest in cinematics of games? Yes. Um, back in the day when I was in high school and, and also um, um, sitting at home and doing a lot of other things and businesses, I used to love games. But the reason I had to stop a few things in life, and I still have a few things to stop, um, Stephen, you're just going away, mate. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, keep love back games. on that something's gone off so carry okay, on so ladies and gentlemen while we are waiting for mr steven let me tell you how amazing this guy is he has just given him his entire channel you know i thank him so so much for having me here but the best time i actually had with mr steven was actually in south africa when he picked us up not from the airport from the venue and and he took us to show these amazing places um which was called a bar um in in, <laughs> in south africa it's all the culture that i like you know how people interact communicate and you know being to johannesburg being to cape town it was such an amazing time and now that we have mr steven back i have to get back to point <laughs> <laughs> okay get back to your cinematics <laughs> Cinematics, yes. So back in the day, yes, I, I used to um, play a lot of games and I build my own computers. At the moment, I've got my custom built computer, which I'm upgrading to um, Ryzen system very soon. So for the last 10 years, I haven't played much game. I've seen them being from, you know, what it used to be from COD all the way till what it is now, like the games. It is phenomenal. Like the graphics is improving so much and it's just insane. The reason why I don't focus on games, programming, or building websites is because I don't have patience. I don't have as much patience than most people to sit on a laptop and program things. So as I said you know, previously, target the things that you're good at because at the end of the day, whatever you're not good at, you're eventually going to learn. Everyone has pros and cons in life, right? You're born with something, right? You develop some skill sets based on how your up upgrowing is, and you're going to lack a lot of skills. So you're going to have spike coming like that in your life. And by the time you're going, growing in age and, you know, having more experiences and succeed in things, those things that you lack in automatically start coming in because you're working constantly on things you're good at and you have to surround yourself with people who are like-minded. You are who your friends are. Look at it. I mean, I'm pretty much like Elvin, like we're the same skin color. Look at it. I mean, oh, I'm right. Whoa, <laughs> there we go. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing me back. <laughs> hey, As you said, hey. perfect time to bring the friends back in. Oh, I love it. Now, uh, those of you that are out like, there, this is, this is the three the three of us. I wasn't going to say the other word, but yeah, no, this was, is where magic happens. I was I was about to tear, you know, listening you know, to Ross speech. You know, I'm just I'm just <laughs> looking at this video, and I think this is the cleanest and the whitest my teeth has ever looked. I'm not sure what um, kind of Color correction you're doing, Stephen, right now, but well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was doing it on my face because then that's where it's going. <laughs> Guys, you know, it's, I really and I really appreciate your time. Those of you that are out there, um, you this is this is the kind of show that this is what I want to get out there. I want to show, you know, the face behind the brand the creator and the positivity and what you know how what makes people tick. Um, and Nikita says here yeah, the three musketeers. That's what we are, the three musketeers. <laughs> so Working as a collaboration, and I mean, you, uh, Elvin, you and Ra work quite a bit together, I mean, and it's 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 really inspirational to see when when someone from a brand point of view links onto someone that's a creator, and you both work together. I mean, you travel around the world together, doing various different things. Tell me, how did that collaboration start? Okay. Or shouldn't I okay. that? Okay. 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 Maybe maybe okay. I'll start. I'll start. I'll... Five minutes left. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, how we first started was, uh, you know, Ra, Ra was actually a, you know, one of our ambassador, you know, um, back then, I think it was a couple of years ago. So um, I, I got to meet Ra, 
through actually through Ziyun. And then uh, we we actually had some like assignment for Ra. Um, so I first met Ra, that was I think about two years ago or two and a yeah. half years ago. Yeah, well, two years ago when we were um, actually attending a one of our exhibition in uh, Germany, in Cologne. It was uh, for Fotokina. And uh, Ra was actually uh, invited to with us to travel with us to to do a, a workshop in during the exhibition. So that was my okay. first uh, time, you know, working with Ra, and then uh, everything started from there. <laughs> Bro, why were you there? What? How did you get so, there? Ra, you might want to share how it how it starts. <laughs> well, that actually was a surprise because um, I actually had um, a feature film planned in, and which I moved and passed by. Um, and I had a I had a contact from Ziyun who who messaged me and said, Ra, we want you to do a workshop. And he's a guy who's never done a workshop in life. He's a guy who never spoken in life. Look, I have been in front of crowd and public from a very small age, so I'm aware how to how to talk to people. But if you are selling this water, you need to know everything about this water. As Americans yeah. say, it's water, you know. But what I'm trying to say is, um, it was quite a challenge. It was quite a challenge. Um, I prepared everything. I over prepared things. But the main reason was I actually shot a commercial for the Crane 3 Lab. Um, and that was a perfect timing because I think the product was launching then, Crane 3 Lab. Um, and we uh, we were going to Germany. So I've never met Elvin. I know this guy, you know, Elvin, who travels a lot. I'm like, I want to be like, like this guy one day, you know. And I, I watched him on Facebook, didn't add him on friends. I'm like, that's all right. Elvin can add me as a friend. Elvin. <laughs> but what happened is <laughs> I went to Shenzhen. Um, to Ziyun's old office. Um, they've upgraded now to a very nice facility. Uh, to their old office and near KK1, um, for anyone who knows that area. And I was there for two days. The day I arrived there, which um, it was quite interesting because I paid taxi about three times more than I should. Um, and the <laughs> second day when there was no one there because there, <laughs> there was a festival going on. So I was stuck alone and, you know, not trying to say much, but um, yeah, I had to go to Starbucks and point on boards and what, what to buy because I don't understand much Chinese stuff. Um, now that Elvin's taught me a little things, um, it's okay. But I'm very um, comfortable talking to ladies, not men, right now. Um, that's all Elvin has taught me how to do. <laughs> so what has happened is um, the former, um, I think, the managing director of Zion, uh, Elvin, um, Anna, and I think uh, there were a few more people if I can remember very well. We were traveling to Germany, Cologne. Um, it was a very long flight. Um, delays were, I think, combined more than 10, 15 hours, um, if we can wow. count up. Uh, my eyes were not very pretty like this. Um, they're normally better, but at the moment, um, it looks okay. It was red. Um, red, yes. That's like those font colors over there. It was very red. Um, Elvin took some photos of me. I think he found me very, very charming in regards to being photogenic. <laughs> so he sent me some photos. We didn't create a connection there and then. Um, I know there's one minute and 30 seconds remaining, but bro, this is not going to end in 60 minutes. It's going to go to another 15 minutes and you know this. So anyways, jumping up, right? We're traveling between airports, flights delayed. We look like people who are very, very high. We were not. And we came to <laughs> Cologne. And uh, my aim was to be able to have some new faces back into Ziyun Boot. And I've done that by walking around, talking to people, making connections. Um, and it was very fortunate that Philip also came there as well. Philip Bloom and Sarah, um, they both came. And it was a very great moment as well, you know, to see them there. Um, and Elvin didn't tell me much, didn't talk too much, you know. And yeah, I think, I think, I think Elvin was just watching, you know, who's this guy? Like, where is he from? <laughs> what is he trying to do? Like, why is he on the stage? He can't even speak very well. But anyways. Yeah. In, in in our in our entire workshop, you know, um, um, what has happened is from five minute till thirty minute workshops, till one hour workshops, till two hour workshops, till three hour workshops, gone all the way till six hour workshops, and it has been yeah. quite great. And and maybe Elvin can Elvin can say why he saw me at Photokina and what really happened after that because I really don't know what happened. No, I was I was I wasn't really you know talking to you too much. I was really really busy because photokina was like one of my first exhibition that i've attended yeah. you know overseas so i was actually really busy so um i didn't pay much attention to you but i think i think you know it was you know it was during the flight you know because we were we had like the flight was really way too long we had too much time 
so that was that was where you know you know i start to create some conversation you know and then uh yeah. eventually i think we we spoke about something which connected us i think yeah <laughs> or, it's interesting or, 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 we, yeah. or we can say steven that find what people love saying and talking about and speak to them about that oh yeah why not <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, that's 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 a big thing that I think a lot of people are looking at. There's a lot of creators out there that are now looking at, um, you know, how do they connect with brands and how do they make, you know, um, that connection. And I think it's all about the passion and what you're showing and how you're showing it and that spark that, that I think brands do pick up there. And I mean, you have to put yourself out there. So, guys, my battery is about to die as well. No, <laughs> Stephen, you're not doing because oh, of battery. On. You're doing because it's one hour. I mean, I know you need to go have dinner, lunch, breakfast, whatever it may be. But look, I'm sitting here at 10 p.m. You know, Elton's sitting there at 8 p.m. We should be okay yeah. to go for another five minutes. What yeah. is what is Nikita thing? I mean, come on, Nikita. Yeah. Do, you, do you think we should go for another five minutes? Let's let's see here. It says my battery. Let's do that. Okay, we got another five minutes. <laughs> see, <laughs> five minutes is like yes. that. Thank you for joining yeah. us on the show. <laughs> no, but really, okay, I guess I, I have one one thing to share. Like uh, you were mentioning about how yeah. to not, you know how you know you know people like Ra connecting like uh, content creators. You know how do they? You know connect with manufacturers uh like us um you know to be honest you know for from at least from my perspective uh i'm actually very open to to work with anyone because uh basically what we need to do now is we, we actually need to you know support this sort of content creators especially during this period of time and uh, yeah. for myself i'm open to work with anyone anyone who is actually you know uh, willing and has the kind of passion to work uh, or to collaborate with us I, I mean, I'm I'm open to to collaborate with them, and I think um, it's through this sort of connection that uh, you know we can all grow together and we can all move on to the next level. Like, look at you know you know between what Ra and I have been doing, we have been traveling around to around to many countries. We have done a lot of workshops, uh, and to be honest, uh, to to this very day, you know, even if Ra were to do a new, another workshop, I were to learn more things from him, and yeah. you know being a manufacturer you know we have this sort of uh i'm not saying that we have the power but you know we have that kind of opportunity for these guys because we as a brand manufacturer uh we actually want to promote our brand in all around the world and these are you know what i call opportunities for content creators and you know if we we feel that you know they are really willing they are really passionate about what they're doing We'll be more than happy to 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 bring them around or to to collaborate. But you know, them. if the opportunities don't exist, you can actually create opportunities. I mean, the reason I speak about this and I feel very comfortable speaking about this is because in Australia there's a very less amount of film work here. Um, you have to survive. You have to do whatever you can, and we create our own opportunities. You know, look, if you're connected with a brand, maybe a brand is going to be interested in something you're filming. Talk to them first. You know, maybe you might be able to go and um, talk to talk to a local hairdresser show. You know, where you could actually yeah. get them be part in the video. You need to be able to collaborate with people, and the best way to do that is first be able to show them what you can do. You can't go there and say, "Hey, I want to be part of your brand," when you have nothing to show. So, for me right. to even even for Zion to even consider me, I don't know what what checklist they have, but I actually went to my local. Um, um, hire a company and I told them, I said, look, I got no money. And they looked at me weirdly. I mean, an Indian guy coming in a white van and, you know, looking very dodgy saying, I have no money. I mean, that's a little bit of a problem. I mean, that's a problem with me. Um, but no, that wasn't the case. I told them I have no money because I wanted to collaborate and start a relationship. I could see the future on what we could do in, in long term. So I said, look, I don't have any money to pay for this, but I need the Crane 2. Crane 2 was the first gimbal I actually tried from Zion. And I got that. They said, okay, Ra, you can have for a couple of hours, go. I took it. I got a model. The model drove all the way about three and a half hours from Canberra to Sydney. Came to Sydney and yeah. we went and shot something. We shot it. I sent it to Zion and then Zion go back to me. You can't just, you can't just approach a company and say, hey, give me a gimbal. I want to show you something. No, go hire it. Make some investment of your own so people can see that you are committed. You know, once you're committed, then, you know, the company might release a little bit of string saying, okay, here, try this. 
You might yeah. not get the desired gimbal or desired product that you want, but you got to build up. You know, you have to climb the ladder. You can't come downwards. Yeah. Never look behind yeah, you. Yeah. Always keep your head up. I mean, you got to look for banana leaves on the floor because you'll trip, but keep on looking forward. You know, as simple as that. I mean, look at Elvin. He, he's, you okay, Elvin? Yeah, I mean. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. I don't want to cut this off too short, but tell me, I want to ask you one, one, one word, one, not one word. Let's do this. I want to know advice, last word of advice to content creators out there, people out there. Elvin first, and then Ra. So, what's yeah. one thing that you should uh, people should do or stay motivated? One thing that's you know to drive them forward. Um, I would say you know stay creative, stay passionate. Especially in you know whatever you what, what you're doing, just one word. Okay, we lost Stephen. So shall we just? No, that's okay. Again? We can take over. We can take over. Carry yes. on. Okay. So welcome to the Ra and Alvin show. <laughs> Thank you. This is the Saturday Night Fever with Ra and Alvin, and um, we are your hosts today. And we are quite no. fortunate that this has been okay. hijacked. Um, Did he just um, said one word or one sentence? That's okay. So one how was your day, Alvin? <laughs> no, it's pretty good. Uh, it's getting dark here. It's eight p.m. I haven't had dinner, so I'm gonna have dinner hey, after this. Do you remember the time? Do you remember the time we were in South Africa and and mm -hmm. Stephen, um, you know, brought, brought us to this particular place and we we're having shots and these massive beer glasses oh, came in. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Do you remember a... he couldn't finish the beer? We had... <laughs> we had... Yeah, we had a beer competition. It was in Capital. We had Park. a beer okay. competition. So it's it's officially now the Ra and Elvin show. <laughs> this is it. This is, this is, I think, how it should be. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, Steven is a great guy. You know, um, Steven's you know, an amazing he's not guy. Here, since he's not here, I'm just going to share like a little bit about Steven. Uh, you know, because of Steven, he actually created a lot of opportunity for both Ra and myself, uh, you know, to even to go to South Africa and to even to collaborate with some of the brands um, over there to, you know, create this workshop. So I thought, mm. uh, you know, Stephen is, is like, I always call him the big man of South Africa, not because he's like, physically big, but um, he's big in terms of his, his passion, you know, in terms of his Very. spirit, when he do things. He's and the really, connection, really the connection. I mean, I mean, this is quite inappropriate, but what guy in the world can go to a hotel, a five star <laughs> hotel at 1 a.m. in the morning? With a group of six, seven, eight people, right? Mm -hmm. And bring so much alcohol. I mean, shh. <laughs> hey, Steven, welcome and, and, back. And bring so much alcohol <laughs> at the same time. I mean, when the yeah. bars are closed, when the restaurants are closed, Mr. Yeah, Steven actually opens the doors for people. <laughs> I told you yeah. that my bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I'm going to have to watch welcome. this video to see what happens. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> No, Stephen. Uh, welcome to Ra and Elvin's uh, talk show tonight. <laughs> Harold and Kuma. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see what what no, we were, behind we were, the scenes. We were, saying, we were saying good things about you. Don't worry about it. So, what Mik was your Mik last Mikita, question? What were they saying? <laughs> <laughs> I know she'll tell me. Anyway, I wanted to ask you so, 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 some motivational. Okay. Oh, I love it. Uh, Steven, you guys are I, awesome, I, Stephen. I can't. Really it in i can't I, really put it in one word so I'll Stephen, just say i think from... no no elvin before you said steven i think yeah. the, the the light you have in front of your camera is changing colors oh the <laughs> rgb is black rgb a little bit of red color red tone is coming RGB. can you can you switch your your profile to 5600 kelvin so it goes quite quite clean and daylight that's right, more like is... it see it covers all the floors <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Okay, so anyway, yes. What was your question? <laughs> yeah, you need that. You need that. You need that RGB light. Switch it to green. You need a little bit more. Yeah, right, just, yeah, you need a little bit of green. All the pinkness is gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh shame. Right. Okay, it's like. <laughs> okay. So what was your question? Um, what was your question? The question is one word. From... <laughs> <laughs> Not one word. Let's do what I wanted to know is some advice moving forward with regards to um, you know content creators right now. From Elvin, from a corporate, from a company point of view, I mean, there's a lot of them that want to um, impress and move forward and potentially collaborate. What was your advice for them? 
stay uh, creative. Okay. So basically, you know, my advice is to, you know, stay, you know, passionate, stay creative and, you know, always have, you know, passion in whatever you're doing. Don't give up like what Russ shared earlier on. Uh, be consistent, you know, show that, that kind of passion. And, you know, it's just a matter of time that people will appreciate your work. Because uh, I, I'm not a filmmaker myself. I'm not a cinematographer or a videographer. Yeah. But, um, you know, from what my belief is, you know, if you if you do something which you feel is good, it belongs to you. Um, it's like a form of art, you know. There's no yeah. good or bad, you know. There's no wrong or right to, you know, a good film or a good production. So, you know, it's how you look at it and how you want people to look at it. So if you... You know, stay firm and be passionate, and you know, be firm to continue to do what you you feel is good. I think that's pretty much good good enough. That's that's what I feel. Love it. Yeah. Ra, your side. Um, I can't give much advice because I'm still learning. But what I will say is, this is my opinion on what you should do. Stop lying to yourself. Um, it is it's very important because you can lie to anyone in regards to if you're doing something or not. But if you lie to yourself, your self-esteem is going to go down. Your motivation is going to go down. At the end of the day, I heard um, and read this very, very good quote saying, motivation doesn't last, but discipline does. So if you can create a process, a structure, work on it. If There's a lot of people in life, they are very good at processes and good at doing things in a consistent manner. Um, like, you know, like, yeah. like, like they say, content is the king, but consistent being consistent is the queen you know you actually want to be that um you, i'm not saying you have to be a queen but you get my point so what i'm trying to say yeah. is when you are trying to do something in life just remember think of this as one of your last opportunities you'll ever get because for me i've actually come very very close to death in life right i've i could have been just gone from this world in one second and that has even changed me even more. So next time I come to South Africa, I've got so much to share on what you should be doing. I mean, you've given this life, you've given this chance. So why do you have to copy people? You actually can do something more. You can go and replicate something that people have already done, but find your style, find what you're good at, find what you like telling, find the story, and your audience will build up automatically. You, you can't please everyone. That's one thing you need to remember. You can't please everyone. I mean. If, if you can say that, you know, a, a family of 14 people in there, like, you know, olden days, there was a lot of, you know, um, brothers and sisters and things like that. Do you think those brothers were always pleasing each other? No, it doesn't work like that. Even in a parliament, do you think all the candidates actually get together? Do you know the Congress actually? No, no one get along, you know. So you yeah. learn from living people. You learn from people who you see every day. You can't please everyone. So what you need to do is simple. You need to have goals and objectives and you need to tick it as you go. What I've learned very, very recently, and it works really well for me, is I have a small book, okay? I have a small book, and what I do in this is I write everything. Every single day, I write a note. If I'm talking to you, I'll write it down. If I've got yeah. something, I write it down. The place I found this is um, on, on how to do this is there's a lot of audiobooks available telling you how to do um, um, journals and things like that, but the way I learned this is through investigations, right? I've been watching a lot of crime videos and I see what investigators do. We have a lot of information processing in our head. We can't process and keep that all in our head, right? They say people have better memory when they sleep more. Do us filmmakers sleep more? No, we don't. I mean, my company is called Nighthawk Production. I don't even sleep at all. So if, what I'm trying to say is by writing things down every second day, every like I write whatever I write here today on what I've been doing today and tomorrow I'll check it out. I'd be like, okay, I haven't completed this. By end of the week, I have my own KPI if I'm actually achieving my goals or not. Because at the end of the day, you can create videos. Yeah, great. You can create content. Yeah, great. You can talk to people. Great. But if you're not accomplishing things towards your goal, you're being sidetracked. Focus is very important. That's something I lack in myself. I get distracted like that, just like a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, which I had once in life. But what I'm trying to say is everyone should start somewhere regardless how good or better you are. And what you need to do is just keep on trying. If you do something, you put it online, there's a lot of trolls, don't worry about it. Just re reply back, tell them it's a great story that they've said. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you know your work is not good. It just means someone does not expect that from you. Someone expects even better from you. Simple as that. 
if you see a comment okay. like it is a pos- positive thing you know and and look we 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 are artists you know all we require is appreciation and sometimes you know in life it's it's human nature we will go to people who actually like telling us what we want to hear but sometimes we need to just put it in the out public in the open world and be public and just say okay this is what i've created please be you know feel free to give me your comments on how i can improve what i can do and probably find people who are doing things better than you and you you look up to them and follow them talk to them you know a lot of instagram and and facebook you know people over there who are videographers and cinematographers on youtube as well they don't mind responding i mean i don't mind responding when someone messages me on instagram i actually respond back regardless if they want a free gimbal from me i'll tell them you know this is a process you can't just get anything free in life but i will respond the idea yeah. is think of it as your last project you'll ever do put your 200% yeah. because there's a there's something called 10x rule go to audible yeah. download an audiobook called 10x rule and it will teach you on how you need to do things in life 10 times better than what you expect to do because at the end of the day let's just say you want to earn a million dollars all right yeah no it's a bit too much money let's bring it down let's say you want to earn $1000 a week all right if you're going to target yeah. $4000 a week your aim for targeting the $1000 a week would be good but what you'll achieve will be probably 80% or 60% of that you're going to have distractions in life from family to life till health till so to pandemic you're going to have so many distractions yeah. in life but the thing is if you target the $1000 a week to $10000 a week you won't get to 10000 a week maybe you will because you have the right team or right mentality and right skills to do it but if you target $10000 a week you're working so much harder you might actually come to $5000 a week and originally you were targeting what $1000 a week so use the same style of working into not just making money but also creating content also your relationship with your family members your wife everyone do the same thing and you will excel simple as that i love that i love that i absolutely love what you said and this has been an amazing interview ellen mason thank you so much for saying it nikita thank you for joining guys i want to ask you again here we go i need to ask you your one word so i want to, this is this is just a little question here that i always do with, one with my guests it's a new thing no sorry no it's one word one okay so one word uh, you're going to start alvin i want to know one word that describes you one word one color and one animal color <laughs> one Can word one color <laughs> and animal so red you've got red yeah word no one 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 word one color and one animal yeah okay for for one word i would say um passion passion yeah color color i would i would like to go for red animal yeah. um elephant okay ra tell me are you are you some carrot cut reading you know mind mind game no 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 i want to i just want to see <laughs> ra what's yours can i get back to the one word later i'll do the other ones first no. yeah do the other one first that's fine Okay, color black. Um yeah. it doesn't have any color to it. That's why I choose black. Um and that's probably how my mentality in my heart is so I can actually have a shield and just say move away I don't need you. Simple as that. And you need this in this industry. Animal? Oh, oh, yeah. you can call it an animal, but I'm going to say a bee. A bee. A bee. Yeah. yeah. So so I can get inside Elvin's wide ears and you know flop all around near the elephant. <laughs> no, I'm kidding Elvin. <laughs> <laughs> okay and then the one word one word what one word what that describes me or describes you or this yeah. conversation one, your favorite your favorite word the word that describes you one word just say steven no epic <laughs> epic epic okay i say so epic a lot awesome so so what we what we had we had i think it was last week it was andre bardnos so he was the creative black elephant we've got the passionate <laughs> red, passion red elephant that's your new stage name so i'm getting you guys stage names so elvin's oh, stage name is the passion red elephant <laughs> and ros is the ap- epic black bee oh that's so, not bad that's not bad 
I think I'll win one EVP, for that. Epic Black B. <laughs> fashion Albert Windsor fashion was red. Fashion Red Elephant. Fashion Red Elephant. That sounds like a dream. Alvin, Alvin that sounds like something... <laughs> don't, don't worry, I'll have that drink ready for you when you come back, Alvin. It sounds like a drink. I don't know, fashion, fashion Red Elephant. It sounds like a cocktail. <laughs> So that's your new that's your new stage name, by the way, you guys. So it's just a little something fun that I do. Guys, thank you so much for thank your you. time and your for being on the show, your motivation, your passion, and everything behind it. And this is why the shows come about is because I met these amazing people, and I think to share their stories and to show share their passion and what they do, their love for what they do is phenomenal. I mean, if if you go and follow Elvin as well, you'll see he's also a content creator. He goes out there, shoots various different content. And same with Ra, it's just, it's just really great. Ra, I'm going to obviously quickly share your website just so that people can see you because I didn't ask you about your social medias. Where can they see your latest work and that kind of thing, Ra, before we end up, end off? Um, well, I'm trying to be more proactive in regards to updating my website and doing things. As you can see, the post was written quite a long time ago. Um, the website is kind of currently in the rebuild, but very soon people will be able to see new posts directly from the website. So the best idea okay. would be, no, that does work and it should not be done. Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank so you. they can actually go to Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook. They're all the same tags. It's Ra Sharma Films. Um, you can find me all the way um, on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you for staying in, and thank you for joining me. It's awesome having you on this show. That's great. Thank, thank you, you for, for having us. us. Thank you for Where's your beers? I thought you had beers already. Okay, okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do a, I'll do a breakout. Okay, on, on, Stephen, give me a countdown, and you're gonna just completely cut me off. Yeah, me no, I'm gonna do yeah. it. So I'm just gonna do okay. this. Ready in three, two, one, and that is Ra and Alvin Wong, two phenomenal guys, two phenomenal creators. Absolutely loved uh, having them on the show, and that's what. The show is about and that's what i wanted from the show it's, it's so exciting and i get um really uh, happy with regards to there's no actual word to see it is i wanted to show you from a creator's point of view what drives the person what actually drives someone beyond you know the norm and what makes them get recognized and i think i'm sure you can see that with regards to ron how he talks and what when he talks about his industry what happens and people are drawn to passion those of you that are out there if if you ever been in any kind of situation and you see someone that talks and they are oh, i'm doing this job and it's really exciting and it's fun and stuff like that but then you've got that person that geez you know i'm just really excited it is lockdown but we are busy doing this or we're busy doing that or well, you know what for this time i'm just actually taking a step back and I'm thinking about what's happening and putting everything into you know perspective. So it's not always about being creative, but did you, do you see there's that passion, that there's that energy. And I've seen it. I've been on various different shows. I've been uh, very fortunate to be introduced and to meet uh, motivational speakers from around the world. And the one thing that's always common there is passion drives a person and passion draws people to you. So when you're creating content, when you're creating or whatever you're doing, do it with passion. You know what? Put it one side, even if it's a face for now. Fake it, but make sure you do it with passion. And I love what what Ra was saying and what he put across there. And same with Alvin. You can see that's why there's such a great uh, synergy between them is they both work off each other. Also, what Ra mentioned with regards to when you're working, you're not good at everything. So don't be scared to collaborate with other people. Where your weaknesses are, get someone else to do it. In one of the talks I was chatting on, on uh, one of the shows that I was on, Last Journey, back in the day on SABC3, we chatted to a motivational speaker, and they said, you know what, reinforce your positives, because to try and get that thing that you're doing negative wrong right takes much longer and much more energy. So you're way more, ex more successful if you concentrate on your positives and grow your positives and then help let someone help you with your negatives. This world's about networking. I wouldn't be able to have these chats with these different people and have all these industries coming on. Guys, we've got the whole industry is going to be on the show. We've got everyone, Nikon's coming on board, uh, Fuji, Sony, Canon. It's the first time that we bring the whole industry onto a show. I want you guys to be able to give me feedback and see what you want on the show, um, especially on guests. But from me, you know, I see Craig Anderson, another one that's supporting here. Um, Steven Jackson, you thank you for being on there and sending the message. Um, Alvin also sending a message. They're really engaging. You can see they really engage. One of the mistakes I made, and those of you that watch, is that when people comment on my stuff and say things, 
you need to get back to them. You need to at least say thank you or do something. And I started doing it down now in lockdown. It's one of my drives is to be able to communicate more. Um, but then that's what uh, the show's about. It's about finding what where the gaps are. Craig Anderson sent me um, the new COVID-19 rules with regards to photographers. I will post it at the bottom. Um, and then we'll have a look. So Craig Emerson, thank you so much for sharing that with me. So I'll put that on the comments below, or you can go and have a look at my website. Those of you that are online, I just want to make sure you go and follow um, uh, at, there it is here, through the lens, um, that's on Instagram. I really would like you guys to follow me there so that we can get more interactive, engaging. If you haven't got me there, go and follow me on Steven Siegel or Siegel Studios. Um, I'm busy building the Through the Lens Facebook now. So until next time, I thank you all for joining. Um, I really appreciate your time, your energy. And until next week, uh, stay safe, stay sanitized. And those of you that are out there, keep creating. And if you're not creating, don't worry. The time will come. Just relax. Get your thoughts in order. It's a time for reflecting. It's a time for, you know, enjoying what you have. So ladies and gents, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Please, it's about subscribing, it's about engaging, sharing this. Hit that notifications little bell so that you can know when the next uh, show comes up. Until next time, have a great one. All the best. I'm Steven Siegel.